I don't know what's going on, but a lot of stuff. Ooh, the EOD. What is up, guys? And welcome to the new 3v3 map, Gorgorov. In BFME 1 on the page 2.22, this map is looking like Mordor. Gorgorov is in Mordor, and hopefully it will be enjoyable for you. We have camps, no castles, and we have Isengard, Isengard, and Gondor versus Rohan, Gondor, and Rohan. So basically, no Mordor included, that's good, because Mordor in 3v3s, you know, especially on the map Gorgorov, you have the home advantage, and we don't want this to happen, you know what I'm saying? I mean, many, many creeps on this map, actually. Holy, <laughs> look, trolls everywhere, Fiesta map, and you know me, I like Fiestas a lot, you know? This guy, I feel bad for him, because right in front of his bees, there are two trolls hunting and protecting the settlement over here. The first fight of the, fight of the game is going to be for this goblin there and it's hard for me to catch every single action in 3v3s because also they are creeping this one but these are the team members so yellow and red they are in one team and the green one is about to take this creep that's good for him level 2 shall be unlocked beautiful and also hobbit was able to share experience so level 2 hobbit is going to hit a bit harder okay and basically he was creeping there is also a creep here <laughs> there are creeps everywhere my friend also behind your um, behind your camp you know so basically Gorgorov it's an evil map obviously and for that reason we have a lot of evil creatures protecting those lands in the name of the Dark Lord Sauron and there is only one evil that's the Isengard the two, two Isengards actually okay big fight here for the creep who will take it who will be the victorious player we will find out very soon it's going to be Gondor. And we have only the creeps in the middle remaining and also on this side, on the left side, protecting this farm, which is very important. Other than that, we have always one starting settlement, it's, it seems like, at least for this spot there is. Never mind, you have two. Always you have two, one of them being behind your bees and one of them being in front of your bees. Um, but this one was taken by the green Gondor player. Who has a level 2 soldier, he's very powerful, and also Pippi in, getting eaten by the dogs. Should be getting level 3 very, very soon. And he will also take this creep. That's pretty good for him. We have lords up on the field. Creeping the trolley with his sword. You want to always use sword when you creep the lair with the lords. Or, I don't know, like Legoras can use the knife fighter. And Faramir should also use the sword. Because the bow damage against structures is very low. Okay? Who's going to take this one? Gondor. The green Gondor player was able to get this one with Boromir. That's big. Now we have 60% more damage for his combos of his ally. And if Lourdes ever gets level 5, he will also have offer 60%. Remember, in BFME 1, the leadership is able to stack with each other. Beautiful hoax strike coming in from the young prince of the Mirkwood Elves. And the guy crippled Boromir. He should have crippled Legolas. And Boromir will be taken by the other Boromir. Level 5 unlocked. Level 4, almost level 5 for this Lourdes. This team at the bottom side is looking incredibly strong it will be hard to fight against them once Lourdes is hitting levels 5 Oboromir knocking down Legolas up on the ground and he's fast but Legolas is as fast as him so you can't catch him as long as he's running away now they are being shot one arrow from his brother and he will kill his own brother Lourdes was the one who get the last hit so he's level 5 now oh my god so many projectiles <laughs> you know flying around the map so the center of the map is the heart of the map. That's always the case in every single map. And for that reason, the main focus or the main fiesta is always going to happen around this outpost you are able to see, which is currently under control from the green gunner player, Hello, at the bottom left side. So he's able to build a well and double statue to provide sustain and also additional leadership for the, for the allied units around the outpost. And Lourdes being level 5 and Boromir being level 5 is extremely dangerous for the enemy team. That's 120% damage leadership. And with the war chant combined, you have 170%. But there is a Gimli, and it has to be good for something. The combos are exposed, no upgrades on them yet, and you need something. Something more than a Faramir level 3. You have double Gimli on the two Rohan sides, that's good. And Legolas extra wing on him, that's good. But Gimli needs to be careful, because Boromir is able to outrun Gimli. Maybe he can always turn and... Oh, nice Hawk Strike. 
but Gimli is exposed now, and who's going to save him? Honestly, Boromir should be fighting him, you know? Boromir can knock him down on the ground, deal a lot of damage, but Faramir is going to be the finisher with the warning arrow, chunking and taking down the dwarf. In the meantime, they are collecting their armies together. So the yellow gonna player and the red Rohan player. We have also Tyrion King on the field, Gimli being only level 1. Level 3 is the time for Gimli to shine. The stubborn pride is also pretty useful in this situation because there is a Boromir who will blow his horn of Gondor to stun you. And if Gimli is level 2, he will grant immunity to the nearby allied units. Legolas popping off, by the way. Level 3, that's pretty good. And also this Boromir needs to come to the middle to support them. Okay, the Stichu in the front is definitely exposed. The combos of Gondor, not very strong without leadership. Their Boromir is only level 3. And he still needs a whole level to unlock his own leadership. Looking to cripple, will miss the cripple on Theodin. Theodin will get away, no problemo. And there are two Legolas, you know, cross-firing the Isengard army, just like in the films. And because they are so agile and fast, they can always do this over and over again. There is no cavalry that can run down Legolas, so he has the time of his life. He can always wait. I think that's like 45 seconds. Gimli using extra, getting level 2. Gimli is a, being a tanky boy against fire arrows, as you can see and tell. He can able, he can take a lot of these damages. But Theodin can't. He will get crippled. And the King of Rohan shall fall to the bonding arrow. The killing spree for the less favorite son of Denethor. And Hawkstrike available one more time. They have Trebuchet up on the field. Beautiful Hawkstrike once again from Legolas. That's pretty good. They have Trebuchet, which... That's not really, you don't, you don't need it, you know, we have so much leadership. And one arrow will be able to finish off the trebuchet. No problemo. Okay, so lots of money for the for the farms. In team games, in 3v3 or 4v4, you also get lots of money compared to 1v1 or 2v2. So money shouldn't be an issue. And for that reason, you will always be able to see the full potential of each individual faction in those team games. Huge army. Slay them all. Okay, Lord is looking for a chance to cripple the closest hero, but they are all chilling in the camp and trying to beat the opponent into the fight around the statue. Legolas level 4, he can now level up this army to even higher power, and he's gonna be doing it. There we go. Level 3 unlocked for this one, and level 2 for this one. The, they are all grouping up into one location and now they need to defend this outpost. Catapults with Firestone are hitting like an absolute truck. Gimli is looking to get into the range to throw his eggs. Boom, chakalaka. Gimli will be crippled for this. Okay, the statue is coming in clutch though, giving you 75% damage. Heal is gonna be used, double heal to keep the Gimli alive and safe. The cripple's duration should be gone, but there is another Gimli. Double Gimli, double trouble. Boromir is being shot in the face. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and I don't know how, but they were able to defend this. We have also Aragorn on the field for even a more leadership. Theodin giving leadership. Legolas giving leadership to the elves too with his level 5 ability for more DPS. This army has raw firepower from a long distance, okay? And Aragorn giving you 50% damage, of course. So let's count. 50% from Aragorn. 20% from Legolas and 40% from Theodine. The elves around this area are getting in total 110% damage. I lied, 170% more damage. And when they are fighting around this area, they have additional 75% damage. With these numbers, you are getting to a, you know, to a total count of insane Boromir will die in a second. In a second, also Farami unlocked his leadership for armor leadership. It's also pretty good. And you need to, in those situations, your heroes can't really contribute too much to the fight. What you need to do with your heroes is you want to use them as a walking statue, okay? You want to move with your army and don't give your opponent the chance to kind of snipe them. Or you need lots of trebuchet, a lot of them. Or what this army, what this guys could, could do is to attack one of the unprotected castles or camps. Because there are two camps which are unprotected. They are all gathering in one place around this location. Gimli throwing his eggs and disengaging. Gimli the Fiesta Maker. Level 4. Almost level 5. Almost. And now they are committing to the outpost. But there is a huge army including a Saruman now. 
Saruman can never ever get into the range of the bottom tank, he shouldn't. The only thing is, the enemy team has Isengard and the topside team don't. It means the leadership can be negated, Saruman gets one-shotted, one-tapped. Yodin King getting level 5, Gimli is jumping, Fiesta is happening, Aragorn is inside the enemy army, ignoring everything, there comes the big heal. Fireball is going to be used, he's gonna use the LN deal. And he's melee fighting Saruman, taking off the wizard's head. Talking about a wizard, boys. We have another wizard coming from the Citadel. Aragorn has been killed by Lourdes, but Lourdes will be killed immediately in return by Faramir avenging his king, his new king of Gondor. There is Gandalf, he's going to blast the Rohirrim summon from the opponent team. But also Gandalf, as powerful as he is, as a Maya of the Middle Earth, he has no chance against this amount of leadership bonuses, okay? And this team is doing a better job microing their heroes, keeping them most of the time alive. That's pretty decent. Level 8 Legolas also is going to hit like a truck, by the way. Trust me on that one. And yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> this, let's take a look into the PowerPoint, shall we? So we have Mateusz. I believe this is the Rohan player. Over... No. He's at the... Hold on, he's a Gondor player, okay, my bad. He's a Gondor player? Is this the Gondor player? No. And this is to Matthews, right? Okay, yeah, through my bad. He has four power points in total after the heal, Alvin Wood, and the Rohirrim special summon. Then we have Krakik, the Rohan player. I believe he's this one on the top left side. No, that's Mustafa. I believe he's this one. Yeah, he's this one. He has six power points in total after the Anduri sword. It means he needs only one more power point to get his Cloud Break unlocked, which is the better choice here. You don't want to go against ants. You don't want to go for ants against this much fire damage, okay? We have Atom, one of the Isengard players, at the middle. Can, yeah, he has Tinted Land, Industry, Palantium, and Warchant, and he still needs around about four and a half power points to unlock his Freezing Rain. Then we have the other Isengard player, Mirko. He needs four power points for his freezing rain. Then we have Mostafa. He has almost two power points after his draft and heal. So he's really behind in the power points department. And last but not least, we have the Gondor player. Hello, at the bottom left side. He has three power points after heal and gun after white. Okay. So far, so good. In Warning Arrow, and you know, the, there are some abilities like Warning Arrow, which will deal bonus damage to the siege weapons, and also Gimli's Extra will deal bonus damage to the siege weapons. So you, they, they are using this over and over again, 45 seconds, and this one I believe has only 30 seconds. Okay. Let's see where it goes, my friends. Let's see where it goes. Catapults. You need double production speed. For the catapults, you want to get more and more siege weapons up on the field. Very important. Even more trebuchet could be always great and additional DPS from a long distance, but you want to protect them because in order to get the damage done to your trebuchet, the heroes got to be stepping up close to you. And then that's your chance with double lords. You want to pin them down so they can't move away, you know? The lords are chilling though. They are just chilling and they are waiting. They are trying to beat them in a little bit, you know? Gandalf in the meantime fighting for the map control. That's the area they are the strongest at with double well and stage two behind for more DPS. But you can see the glow of these units. But Theoden is running it down. Theoden is like four failing guys and he will get one tapped. Now there comes Gimli. He's going to uh, eventually look for a chance to blast on them or never mind. Gimli is also running it down. Gimli will try to, I don't know what he's doing, but he's going to run it down for sure. This Gimli on the other hand will use his uh, extra to one shot one of the ballista and the fight continues he's gonna get crippled for this but it looks like they, they don't want to commit you know to this fight market please too just why not but you have only three blacksmiths to buff but i mean it's better than nothing gandalf is being chung 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 there comes the war chant talking about chanting and there's also gandalf who got crippled double cripple double trouble boom boom with the trebuchet king kill theorin you want to always kill stuff that you can kill fast okay I don't know what's going on, but a lot of stuff and visuals are happening here for sure. 
and bottom is hitting level 6. But they are on the enemy land and you can see the Cloud Prick is stunning them. There comes the counter Cloud Prick now from the other player. Aragorn is manhandling the army. This guy is looking for a chance to blast but he gotta be careful because this is the land from the uh, top... I don't know what I'm say talking about. I don't know what's going on here. Really, it's hard. I think I, we need Eminem to comment it this. You need to be a rap god to comment it this. You need to be talking fast in order to tell everything what you want to do, you know? I'm not as skilled as Eminem is. There comes the Eagle Special Summon on the Hero Hunt. It will be One of them is being able to destroy one of the Ballista. Now the target is Lourdes. Lourdes is going to be killed. But the Eagles will pay for their mistake by their lives. They are going down. And boom, chakalaka. This... Ganov is hitting like a truck and they don't want to commit to this. They should be committing to this because Aragorn is running it down. He's going to use Atelas and also Blade Master to get a bit more tankiness and sustain. And he's a tanky boy. And remember the Easter Light and also Lightning Sword are on cooldown. And for that reason, Aragorn will be able to get away from this, at least for now. But the other Ganov is running it down for whatever reason and will be taken down. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Who's Ganov died actually? There are only two Gondors. I believe this guy is Gandalf. No! Saruman died. We have seen this one. I don't know, somebody died here. Who was that, guys? Was it not Gandalf who died? But I see still two Gandalfs up on the field. And there are only two Gondors in. Uh, Aragorn is gonna get killed. We need Freezing Rain here, by the way. I don't know what they are using. They, they don't want to use the power points. They have 10 power points and they have finally. Freezing Rain is going to be available now. He's going to eventually choose it and hopefully use it. And But you want to use it while you go inside the enemy base, okay? Oof, the explosive mine! Kill him, kill him! One hit! Oh, be careful though. You don't want to overcommit. Okay, oof, oof, what a damage on, on Ganov. And again, this is the land from the enemy. You can see that when you are not glowing, then that's not your leadership. And you can see the red circle, the animation around the Alvin Wood, determines that this is the land from this player or from this player, which is hard to tell because they have very similar colors to each other. They are both picking red. In the level 4, Trebuchet is going to be sent forward solo. But again, you want to be careful against Gimli. Gimli's goal is to just go in and jump on your face. He will be able to destroy one of the catapults. He's going to commit and now he's going to use Slayer to get Speedy Gonzalez and out. Okay, barely able to survive. Aragorn, they are committing to Ganov. Uh, Ganov is going to get in safety. And again, fight on the enemy land is basically fighting under freezing rain. Okay, you are willingly putting yourself into a situation in which you have zero leadership bonuses. Which is obviously a huge handicap, okay? Gimli is coming in clutch. Gimli has Leap. Gimli has Slayer. He's gonna one-shot the trebuchet. No problem for Gimli. When Gimli is level 5, he's actually the hero of the game. The well is gonna be the target, which is smart. Always destroy the well first. The Gimli is gonna pee for this with his life. We have a lot of power points on the bank. Now we are getting closer and closer and closer to the ultimate power points like Balrog and also EOD. Now they are also having no leadership because of the Freezing Rain. We have seen multiple heals. Remember, there are three good factions. Saruman is going to buy fireball Theodin King and kill him. The army here is still not to be underestimated. They have crazy amount of leadership bonuses. They are one-shotting everything in their path. With Boromir's for Gondor ability and Lourdes' leadership and Boromir's leadership and also Stichu behind. It's not, uh, by the way, not reaching here. That's why you want to build Stichu always here and here and here you want to build a well. Because you are fighting here and the Stichu can't reach this way, you know? The statue is covering an area like this, for example, right? That's the statue area. So you fighting here means the statue's leadership from this and also from this is not going to be reaching this far. Either you want to fight here or you want to build a statue here in the well behind. We see explosive mines up on the field. Eight power points for one of the Gondors. He can go for the Cloud Break. Mateusz, the Gondor player in the middle, has almost nine power points in the bank. Needs only one power point in a quarter to unlock his army of the dead, which is, you know, the army of the dead basically doesn't care about your leadership bonuses, okay? The only thing that can one-shot them the, se the second they get summoned is the War of Power from this Gandalf. But he's far away from this. This Gandalf almost the same level. Who is the closest one to EOD? I think Matthias. Because the Eisen... Bro, don't scare me. What's going on? 
<laughs> every time like a earthquake you know all right mustafa went for the end summon oh be careful don't step up like this yeah and hello this is the gunner player at the bottom left side here's the power points for the cow break and that's gonna should also be his choice they are trying to bring in some explosive mines but this rohan player cray kick i believe is able to snipe them every single time with his alvin warriors they got us level 9, pretty strong. Aragon level almost 7. Huge army of Gondor over here. With as much leadership as you can imagine, you know. It's like Black Gate mission. And the map, you know, Gorgorov is suiting well to this epic army of Gondor and Rohan. The siege has begun. Here you want to demolish Straff very early, because Matthias is extremely close to his AOD. If you don't demolish this well in time, you will get lots of power points. In the meantime, the flank is happening from the other side of the map. Beautiful shots. We have a tainted land. And Gimli is just running it down to destroy the trebuchet. And summon Rohirrim, summon Fiesta, summon, ladies and gentlemen. Ganov got crippled. Ganov can't move. He's going to use heal. Lourdes is manhandling him in the front. Ganov is going to be taken down. Heroes are running it down, but there are so many targets. Who you want to kill first? You want to kill the Ganov first? You want to kill the Theorem first? You want to kill the Ents first? You want to kill the AOD first? AOD being special summon. Now, he's being able to catch Ganov with his arrow volley. Use, use. He's going to use the shield bubble, but it's not going to save him. It's a level 9 hero killer. Legolas, ladies and gentlemen. Holy moly, and for the first time in this game, the top topside team will be able to take down the outpost and control the center of the map. Holy guacamole, I'm losing my voice over here. Okay, Crack Kick, the Rohan player, is also very close to AOD, but what a fight! To the center of the map they didn't have to do this you can just sneak in attack the bees but it felt like they had like an agreement okay we are fighting in the middle exclusively and that's what they were doing since the beginning of the game but those games turn into the most fiesta games and you know it i know it we all enjoy the fiesta games a lot Oh, wow, boys. Okay, so the Isinger players, they need still 5 and 6 power points for their own Badrock Special Summon. Which is a lot. It's a lot, you know? Money, as you can see and tell, is not a problem. 13,000 in the bank for Isin. That's some money there. Cloud break is going to be used, stunning the enemy units. The catapults on the stun targets. It's a very good combination. Stun them and rock them. Heroes are melee fighting in the front. This Rohan could also step up to this army, but this army shouldn't be underestimated. Again, still Lord's leadership, Saruman leadership. And overall, Isengard army is pretty strong. Remember, this is not Rabble of Mindless Orcs. These are Urukai, ladies and gentlemen. Green is active, I believe. That's why they are not going. This Gimli is manhandling everybody, boy. Demon. Gimli is a demon, man. But he's going to die. Even demons die at some point. I like this map, man. Gorgorov. And also available in the patch 2.22. If you haven't already, this game also has been played on the battle arena. You know. Ooh, the AOD from the Gondor player. Who is this name? Hello. Yeah, he's saying, say hello to my little friends. And they have even the animation for Gondor, but for Gondor, Arag AOD doesn't care about for Gondor. Running down your heroes, running down everybody. Put, in, uh, put Faramir maybe into the Citadel. That would be a good savior, but he's gonna... No, I, I take it back. It's the outpost from Rohan, so you can't put it in. And the outpost will be taken down. There comes the Easter Light, chunking this dude really hard. But Gimli is on the hand. He's like, come here, wizard. Wizard must pay. He's so fast, actually, you know? Holy, <laughs> he's so fast. I like it. Okay, outpost control will be again taken over by the bottom side team. Gondor, Aizen, Aizen. And Gimli will be slain. Remember that? So we have 
Now, he would be available for crack kick, the Rohan play at the top right. That means he can stall the game out a little bit longer. And he needs to do this because there is a huge army coming and the only way of self-defense would be the summoning the off breakers okay the aot and this isengard army is from mirko so watch what's gonna happen i will show you the power points never mind here's the balrog summon he's gonna lose stuff and as he's losing stuff he will gain power points as you can see and tell and especially when you lose heroes like lourdes or saruman you will get a big boost of power points okay that's why evil factions need 20 power points to their ultimate summon while good factions only need 10 power points okay that's the main reason so everybody will die even boromir can't get away from this maybe you need to summon balrog here underneath the army in order to defend the outpost would be a very important decision however keep that in mind that balrog is basically a cheat code in this map because in this map there is no castle there is only a camp with what six spots six available spots and the Balrog is indeed able to one-shot the whole camp by himself. The most important detail here is to one-shot the camp of a beautiful shield bubble to block the damage from the... Oh, now this... Okay, he's gonna die now. There is no way he can survive this. Eagles taking over. The bubble is gonna reduce the incoming damage. Eagles are trying to finish it. They will be able to finish the wizard. And once again, the control of the middle camp, middle outpost has been shifted. Over the, over the top side team. He's holding on his Balrog. Lourdes is going to be taken down. Theoden is tanky boy on his horse. But he will eventually die. Remember, this, there is no leadership for this army. Elendil. Beautiful Elendil. Land will be covered. And this is not over yet. But the middle is going to be taken down by the Gondor Rohan Rohan team. Rohirrim summon will be used. There is no pikeman and summon will be used too. So many summons. That's why good factions are very good in the late game because they have so many additional reinforcements. They can up, they can summon up on the field. I mean, not only EOD, but eagles and Rohirrim rangers and also elves can be called for the reinforcement. And there is a Nazgul, random Nazgul appearing. This map is actually pretty nice, man. I like this map. You know, it's of course the modern map. The Nazgul is observing what is going on on this map, Gorgorov. I like this one, you know. I like this one, actually. Okay. Gimli is looking for a chance. He's going to blow. Uh, not blow. <laughs> He's going to jump on him. That's what I was trying to see. And this Eisen is holding on his Balrog. Remember, they have potentially two Balrog summons in total. And... Also, this Isengard is not the power points for the Balrog. Okay, they can summon up two Balrogs at the same time to guarantee the destruction of at least one camp. That's what they can do. Because the middle camp is under control from the Gondor player. So they're going to be summoning the Balrog for the defense, at least one of them. And there comes... I'm a wielder of the Flame of Arnor. Darkfire will not... Ah! <laughs> Pew! <laughs> Shut up, Gandalf. Shut up. Now, Boromir, don't touch the wizard. Shut up, Captain of Gondor. I'm Captain of Darkness. This is my land. This is my game. I am the demon of the destruction. The Diablo of Middle-earth. Ah, he's even using the Screech. What a badass. The Scream is the most used ability in the game, I believe, for an expensive guy like Balrog. Stunning them. Wouldn't really do much. But Aragorn, Aragorn. The king of the West. Get slapped. Pshoo. Hit him. Hit him one more time. Oh, Aragorn shall survive. And Balrog's time shall be over. Okay. So this Balrog, besides defending the current situation, wasn't able to do too much more. And I believe the miscommunication is there. Because I'm being honest with you. Yes, the topside team is very powerful now. But alone the fact that they got this far is because of the miscommunication of the bottom side team. Because you have no Isengard, and you, your army relying only on leadership bonuses. But against double Eisen, and the rain does negate your um, seat, negate your leadership for 2 minutes and 10 seconds. And you have two of these reins. So basically you can stack it up a little bit, you use it, the second the duration is over, your ally can use it, and you have 4 minutes 20. So from 6 minutes you can negate their leadership for 4 minutes 20 so they have only leadership for what 1 minute and 40 and this is not going to be enough to win the fight and you have like crazy leadership yourself you know you're able to summon now from crack kick 
Now from, I believe it's from Matthews for the second time, and also Mustafa is EOD by the way. And he's coming through the bottom side. Beautiful catapult hit here before it got destroyed by the EOD. Now they are fully committing. Remember, there is one more Balrog. Now, never mind, there is no more Balrog. But I, I missed the Balrog, guys. Maybe I missed so many actions in this game, actually. By the way, Gimli just run down Lords and kill them. That's how powerful Gimli is with Slayer. Gimli is a super underrated hero of the game, by the way, you know? He's only 2000, he's so cheap, and he has like crazy buffs in 2.2. Like crazy buffs. His extra longer range hits harder. He grants resistances to fear to every single unit around him. His sleep attack damage has been improved. His slayer moved to level 5. I mean, what else do you want from a 2000 hero, you know? Palanti has been used. Elendil is going to make them run away into different directions. Gandalf is being chunked, but he will be able to get away from this, at least for now. That comes to Rohirrim summon. Four of Eolingas from the green gonna play him. He's committing to the middle camp, but the middle camp is protected by units inside the tower, by units around the outpost, and also by Gandalf, who is using his lightning sword to end the Rohirrim summon once and for all. And also, Legolas is being able to survive the burst. Now he's shooting at him. Watch the damage. Tang, tang, tang. Legolas, the killer of Gandalf. The killer of Gandalf, EOD, is going to be enough not able to kill the guy and mirko has been defeated now it's gonna turn into a one not one into a two with three situation uh, easter light on saruman saruman being a chunky boy always used the will of saruman to get healed beautiful fireball in return but there comes the eagle special summon from the green gunner player this kind of has to run but luckily he's a fast boy on the shadow of eggs fly shadow of eggs and running into the outpost if he has no heal he will still die but with this much leadership look what eagles can do to the eagles what not what eagles can do to the eagles no i'm thinking about what the can do to the eagles i mean i need to become eminem boys you know eminem to wrap this commentary you know for this 3v3 4v4 fiesta action that comes through here summon now from the top player matthews trampling down all these units up on the ground and they are holding themselves but here is the thing okay mostafa has not used his eod just yet and you can combine this with the end so basically you that's a very good combo by the way you summon eod to kill the army and the end can deal crazy structural damage right crazy structural damage Matthews has the eagles and he's gonna summon the eagles to kill some of the catapults i believe yeah the catapults are gonna be taken down by the eagles no problemo but everything is able to shoot everything like every level three furnace is able to shoot so it's difficult to make stuff but their mission was to destroy the catapults and they did there is only one more trebuchet remaining and this one should be taken down by you know theodin and also elma no problemo more traps are coming from the left side these heroes are not being Microed by the player, and one of them, actually Theorin, will be taken down just like in the films, okay? And also Faramir has been slain. Uh, Krekik, the Rohan player, has EOD, he can use it, and also Mostafa has EOD. So Matthew's EOD is on cooldown, and yeah, that's basically it. So there is only Isengard remaining, because the other player left also. When you leave the game before your... Um, See it before your camp has been destroyed, you will give all your money, your command points, and also your bees to your ally. I mean, you can cripple him all you want, but are you sure about that, man? Even if there is no army, you can't fight against Aragorn. Aragorn is the best melee hero in the game. Like, when he has this up, when he has Anduri's sword, I mean, basically when he has Anduri's sword, he's already very strong, but when he has the Anduri plus the Bleed Master combination, nobody can touch him. Like, he's not only becoming extremely damage heavy hitter hero, but also his tankiness is unmatched. Like, he can tank everything, you know, with this much armor of a boost and also the damage boost from Anduril and the Blade Master. Anduril, the Flame of the West. One of the two last remaining will be destroyed, remaining camps. It is, and he is eventually waiting for his Balrog to delay the game a bit longer, but to deny, I don't think that's gonna be possible. Smite, dealing half the damage to the trap. You want to combine this with Eoma and Eowyn. So Eowyn Smite and Eoma Smite, then you can destroy one of them. 
So basically every faction is a hero that can one-shot the trebuchet or catapults. For Gondor keys, it's of course Faramir. Faramir is one arrow. And also, of course, East Easter Light can do this also. But usually you don't want to waste Easter Light for this, you know? For Rohan, it is Gimli. Gimli can one-shot it from a long distance. Mordor does need it because Mordor has two Nazgûs and Witch King who can also one-shot it. And Isengard has Saruman. Beautiful, but... Ooh, ooh, level 9, maybe that's why he was able to survive. There comes the... I will turn at the turn of the tide. I will be sent to you once the game is over, until my task is done. You can't face tank this, boy. It's... Oh my god, now everything is coming, boys. The Fangon Forest is coming, the Elves are coming, the Heroes are coming, the Ranges are coming, the Traps are coming. Everything is going to destroy the last camp of the player. To win the 3v3 after having a rough start on a, on a new map, Gorgorov, in the BFME1 Online Arena 3v3, which you can also download from the link in the description down below. Just click on Patch 2.2 Launcher. It has the game, it has all the games, it has the online mode, all in one PV. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.